Joining us live via Skype is a policy strategist, Dr. Charles Omole. Good morning to you, doctor, and thank you for joining us. Uh, and how are you doing this morning, doctor? Well, I mean, uh, considering um, <laughs> we're doing well, thank you. Uh, are you, are you self-isolating? <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm okay. not self-isolating. Uh, we, we are in lockdown in the United Kingdom, so uh, unless it's absolutely necessary to go out, we actually don't go out. So okay. uh, that's where we are at the moment. All right, quick, quickly, bring us up to speed. What's the general disposition and atmosphere like in the UK right now? Well, I mean, one of the things that has helped the UK, I think, uh, as in several other countries in the West generally, is the daily briefing by the government, which has been very detailed. Uh, this, uh, the government put together a scientific team and they, on a daily basis, answer questions on where we are, they explain the trajectory uh, from the beginning of this uh, pandemic uh, plan in the UK. Uh, what the government did was to put together some experts to do some modeling and in that model, they put some parameters in terms of, okay, what are the weekly uh, likely infection rate? You know, when do we reach the peak and stuff like that? And one of the key elements they were interested in, even at the beginning, is what we call the reproductive rate. In other words, if you are COVID positive, how many people will you infect? And they put together a system. I mean, roughly it means that uh, there was a research done a few years ago uh, they found out how many people, uh, I think it was about five years ago now, how many people one person interacts with on a daily basis. So that was a benchmark. And what's been done is that they felt that a lockdown will reduce how many people you are able to interact with. So a research again was done two weeks ago, within the last two weeks, and it's found out that the number of people we come in contact with daily has reduced by 70%, which well, that was fed into the model and showed that actually we are about approaching the peak in the United Kingdom uh, of the because a lot of people who have it are not infecting as many people as they as they could have infected if there was no lockdown. Now, in, in the light of what you just said, now what would you recommend our leaders do differently in tackling COVID nineteen? Well, I mean, the challenge in Nigeria is lockdown is good, but lockdown and waiting and praying for the best is not good. You know, lockdown is supposed to be a means to an end, which means that certain things you're supposed to do while you're in lockdown. I mean, for example, in terms of, uh, in the case of Nigeria, we don't know, number one, we need to ramp up testing. That's number one, because in the UK, uh, the capacity in the UK right now is about 32,000 tests per day. Even though they're not using that capacity yet, the government has ramped it up that by end of uh, May, uh, they'll be able to test 100,000 people per day. So, so it's testing, testing, testing. Uh, as we can see the spike in Lagos now, what that simply means is that there's not enough testing taking place, you know, uh, 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 in Nigeria. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is social distancing, which is part of what lockdown is supposed to achieve. But in a place like Nigeria, where uh, you have uh, lots, of, lots of poor people, you could have uh, 50, 60 people living in face me and face you uh, flat, you know, in, in some poor areas. So even if you lock them down, that's still a lot of people that could initiate and trigger community spread, so to speak. So that's why things like uh, masks should be considered. For example, if people are to go out in public and so on and so forth. The challenge generally I think I have with the Nigerian model is locking down May be good. May is operative word, but I clearly don't think it's necessary to do full lockdown. But the key element for me is testing, mask use, massive uh, mask use, and more importantly, tracing of uh, those who've come in contact with infected people. Now, leaders are meant to be dealers in hope. Let's talk about leadership, the type of leadership model that should be applied, because everyone seems to be looking up to their leaders at this time. What would be the best model of leadership to apply given now? Well, the key thing about, I mean, the key, the key element about leadership, I think we, we need to learn, especially when we are dealing with uh, an imponderable like COVID, that a lot of the research around it are new and a lot of, there are a lot of unknown unknowns, so to speak, about, about COVID, is transparency. Uh, 
Um, a very good example uh, I want to give to public express this is what happens in the what happened in the Netherlands. In February, the Dutch government decided that okay, they're going to prepare based on the fact that an infected person will spend 10 days in hospital. So they made provisions for uh, 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 their be if beds in hospital based on the fact that 10, 10 days would be the maximum an infected person will, will spend. But the science behind that was a modeling they used in the country, and the government published it openly. Everybody saw it. But what happened by early March or mid-March was that they found that an infected person was actually going to spend 28 days in the hospital, which meant the provisions they made for hospital beds was not going to be sufficient. So the government immediately published the new science, uh, the new modeling guidelines showing that it's 28 days. So nobody could criticize them because of that level of openness. So imagine if the government didn't publish the science or the advice behind it, and they were just changing their mind like that. People would think they're just making it up. So when you're dealing with an imponderable like this, that you can't be sure of the science, the science is not, belt, it's not bolted down yet. A key leadership virtue is transparency. So, okay, this is what I've been given. This is what's guiding our policy. When the science change, our policy will change. Right. That way people are able to come along with you rather than the secrecy surrounding so many things we do in Nigeria. Uh, my last question to you is quite trapezoid in nature, right? Um, do, do you see a silver lining b behind these dark clouds? And after, after all of this might, might have blown over, do, do you think we're going back to the way things used to be, the normal way things used to be, or uh, a new world is coming out of this with a new normal? How, how do you, what do you say to this? Well, there will be a new normal for, for, for the foreseeable future. Um, I mean, we had the worst pandemic in 1918, and uh, up until three, four years later, it affected the world. But the world went back to normal. So the world will go back to pre-COVID. I don't see that happening in the next two, three, four years. But I think the damage really that is more paramount uh, in terms of uh, the COVID is the effect on the economy of nations. Uh, the, way, the way it's been done because of the lockdown, the global recession that will follow, uh, it, will, it will affect different countries slightly differently, but most countries will have a recession. Uh, uh, Europe is definitely going to go into a recession. America may go into a recession. Lots of African countries will go into a recession as a result of this. So, uh, 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 so what that means is that the, 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 the construct of the economy will change. The nature of the economy will change. Uh, for me personally, I feel for a country like Nigeria, uh, the challenge we are going to face a lot more is infrastructure. It's infrastructure in nature. Because a lot of things are moving online now. Even after COVID is over, a lot of the things that started online will re remain online. I know your know, previous story, you're talking about religious organizations doing things online. I, for, for my own information, I know in Nigeria, for example, there are many churches that this COVID is the first time they went online. They were not, they were not online at all before. So clearly, after COVID, the online platform they built or they've subscribed to will remain. So that will put a lot of pressure on things like data infrastructure in Nigeria, and so on. A lot of businesses will go online. So there's a need for a repositioning of the economy. Uh, 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 in a way, uh, the column I write uh, for a particular magazine in Nigeria for next month, I'll be talking about the 25 new trends, as it were, that COVID will bring to grow any economy in Africa. So, so we'll be dealing with that in a bit more detail uh, through another uh, platform. All right, Dr. Charles Somali, thank you for your time and for joining us on the news. Thank you very much.